Welcome to the Pediatric Review, where I help you prepare for your pediatric nursing exams. If you would like a copy of the study guide, you can find it on my website, blossomwithjessica.com. So let's talk about the respiratory system in pediatric patients. So the first disorder we're going to talk about is epiglottitis. This is a bacterial form of croup. It's an inflammation of the epiglottis that occurs in children two to eight. It's an emergency situation due to the rapid progression to severe respiratory distress. Signs and symptoms we'll see are a high fever, red and inflamed throat, painful swallowing. There'll be no cough, but a muff muffled voice and drooling. They'll have agitation, tachypnea, retraction, struggling to breathe, and strider. You'll see tachycardia, and they'll be in a tripod position again because they're struggling to breathe. Our nursing interventions are patent airway, assess breath sounds, observe for any nasal flaring, retractions, or strider. Do not measure oral temperatures. They'll be NPO. Don't leave the child unattended. Avoid the supine position. Do not restrain the child. IV fluids, antibiotics, analgesics, corticosteroids, and antipyretics. Cool mist, oxygen, and nebulized epinephrine. Have resurrection equipment available. Have resuscitation equipment available. Do not attempt to visualize the pharynx or take a throat culture as this can lead to a spasm and obstruct the airway. Then we have laryngotracheobronchitis. This is inflammation of the larynx, trachea, and bronchi. It's the most common type of croup. Gradual onset preceded by upper respiratory infection. Nursing interventions are the same as epiglottitis. We also use a HELOX, which is a mixture of helium and oxygen which reduces the work of breathing and relieves airway obstruction. If the patient still has upper respiratory infection, we maintain them on isolation precautions. Next, we have bronchitis. This is inflammation of the trachea and the bronchi associated with upper respiratory infection. It's usually mild. You'll see a fever, dry, hacking, non-productive cough that's worse at night and becomes productive in two to three days. And we'll monitor for respiratory distress, provide cool, humidified air, and increase fluid intake. Then we have RSV. This is an acute viral infection that's highly contagious by direct contact with respiratory secretions. It's a common cause of respiratory infection and bronchiolitis, bronchiolar swelling, and increased mucus production. We'll see rhinorrhea, eye and ear drainage, pharyngitis, cough, wheezing fever, tachypnea, retraction, cyanosis, and apneic episodes. As RSV progresses, respiratory distress increases. Our nursing interventions are contact precautions, maintain patent airway with head of bed 30 to 40 degrees, elevated, cool humidified oxygen, monitor pulse ox, suction if needed, antiviral, antipyretic medications, and IV fluids for dehydration can also give them palizumab, which is for high-risk infants. And cough suppressants are given with caution because they interfere with clearing of secretions. Then we have pneumonia, and this is inflammation of the pulmonary parchema or alveoli or both. It's caused by virus, mucoplasma agent, bacteria, or aspiration. We'll see fever, cough, malice, rhinitis, sore throat, irritability, lethargy, poor feeding, headache, chills, abdominal pain, and chest pain. Our nursing interventions is to treat if symptomatic, administer oxygen with cool, humidified air, antipyritics, antibiotics, bacterial, if it's from bacterial. And we can also do chest physiotherapy or postural drainage and suction mucus. And we want to monitor for weight loss as this is a sign of dehydration. Then we have asthma. This is a chronic inflammatory disease of the airways. Signs and symptoms, which usually come on in the early morning or at night or both, is wheezing, dyspnea, chest tightness, non-productive cough, and it can have the production of a frothy, clear gel sputum pale or flushed or cyanosis. Nursing interventions are to assess the airway patency and respiratory status, oxygen by nasal cannula or face mask, 
quick release rescue medication and initiate an IV line, test for allergies, and teach the family and patient how to administer inhalers and signs of an acute asthma attack. Then we have cystic fibrosis. This is an autosomal recessive trait with no cure. Secretions are thicker and stickier, causing obstructions in small passageways of the respiratory, GI, and reproductive systems. Signs and symptoms are emphysema, hypoxemia, wheezing, cough, dyspnea, cyanosis, and a barrel chest. They may have meuconium ileus, frothy stools, and a rectal prolapse, and pancreatic fibrosis. And they can have a high level of sodium and chloride in their sweat, which gives it a salty taste. Nursing interventions are to monitor respiratory status, chest PT, percussion, or postural drainage. A flutter mucus clearance device, which is a handheld and handheld percussors or special vest percussor. Use of a positive expiratory pressure mask may be used to move secretions to the upper airway. Aerolyzed or IV antibiotics, oxygen, high calorie, high protein, high fat diet, monitor stools, and pancreatic enzyme replacements within 30 minutes of eating and with all snacks, and a salt replacement. Then we have sudden infant death syndrome or SIDS. This is most frequently occurs in the winter during sleep and in male infants from two to three years of age. Incidence is lower in breastfed infants. High risk for SIDS includes prone sleep position, a soft bed or excessive sheets in the bed, overheating, co-sleeping, and a mother who smoked or abused substances while pregnant or the child that is exposed to smoke. To prevent, the infant should be placed in the supine position to sleep and we should educate mothers on risk factors like smoking around the child. If you would like a copy of the study guide, you can find it on my website, blossomwithjessica.com.